natural capital options, I suppose. Um, we are, offer a high integrity option for natural capital. So how are we able to do that? We are established under the Biodiversity Conservation Trust Act as part of the 2017 national uh, native edge reforms to offer long-term in perpetuity on title agreements and protection for vegetation or you know biodiversity. Um, we are all about private land conservation, so we only work with private land holders. So we are focused specifically on private land, essentially, and supporting you to do what you're often already doing. Uh, we are prioritising, we prioritise our investment, we have a very complex way of doing that, but if you were to look at the map of how we prioritise our investment, uh, you would see that it is very highly focused on the sheep wheat belt of New South Wales and then the areas uh, to either side of that as, as a priority area. We do tend to target um, specific conservation values that we might be looking for, so species or um, particular ecosystems that we're looking to protect where, where they're particularly at threat. Um, but we are very prioritised, and you can read that on our website. We do have an investment strategy if you're interested in seeing uh, where we have invested money and where we are intending to invest money into the future. Um, so all of it, most of our agreements are all long term. Um, majority of them are in perpetuity and on title, so they go from you as the current landholder to the next landholder and the next landholder. Uh, we offer financial support for quite a number of our agreements, which I'll talk about in a moment. And we offer landholder and ecological support. So my role um, within, our, within our team is to support landholders to enter into agreements with us or even start the conversation. Is it an appropriate, agree is it an appropriate option for you in this space? Uh, and go through that process with you, helping you to develop an agreement that will work for you and your property and your farm business. And then once you're signed up, you will, particularly if you have financial support, you will see me every year. So this is not a sign up and then we walk away and, and we let you do your thing. Um, we are there as part of that agreement, helping you to manage it, adapting as, thing, as times, you know, as times change, conditions change. And as, you know, you might find that we were targeting St John's Ward at the start of your agreement and, and you got on top of it. So then we might start to look at funneling some of those funds that you have into another priority area. Um, in your agreement. Uh, we also offer ecological support. So part of our team, we have a number of ecologists on the team. We do um, have our own monitoring program. So we are out there monitoring change over time on agreements to see that what we're doing, how we're managing, is actually having the desired outcome. So it is a really high integrity um, program that we offer. There is it's an accredited monitoring system that we use. I think it's um, outlined in the, in, the, in the notes. So, you know, definitely if it's something you're interested in, we would love to chat with you about it. We have quite a network, as you can see already, across the state. Um, and that network is continuing to grow. I think those figures were from August last year. So we have since had a number of programs since then and signed quite a few new agreements with, you know, significant thousands more hectares added to what you see there. So a program overview, um, I might start, which is a bit odd, I'm going to start on the far right and I'm actually not going to talk about the Biodiversity Offsets Program because the Credit Supply Task Force is here somewhere and John's going to talk about it, yes. Um, so revolving fund, that really is great for you to know that it's out there if you're looking to sell your property and you know you have a fantastic conservation asset on it and you think we might be interested. We do actually purchase properties, put conservation agreements on them and then sell them on with that agreement in place. So definitely something to keep in mind if um, property sale is something you might be considering in the near future. So, but our two main streams that we have available uh, in this region are the Conservation Partners Program, which is our voluntary stream. Uh, it's no, no annual payments associated with that, but you do have access to grants under that. Um, and that, you know, starts at a 20 hectare minimum for any vegetation type, essentially. Then we go into our funded stream, which is our conservation management program, and our two main offerings in those areas are conservation tenders, which is a reverse auction style um, participation process, and the fixed price offer program, which we have available 
every year, all year. So fixed, we are currently assessing for fixed price offer eight. We're doing field work at the moment um, and we have fixed price offer nine open. Uh, so the fixed price offer program is a dollar per hectare per annum rate. We set the, the figure based on uh, land values and your local government area. And then we um, talk with you essentially about what, you can, what we can manage. So we generally start with um, fencing, track maintenance, weeds, pest control. So some, you know, some very basic, um, you know, actions that you're probably already doing on your farm. We could put in a new fence as part of that agreement. Um, we would be reducing grazing generally. Um, we do have grazing allowances depending on the vegetation type or stock exclusion. So it just depends. Um, conservation tenders, we, I'm going to talk about an example one in a moment, uh, but essentially a reverse auction. We are looking to target very high priority areas or, or species. Um, and we then ask landholders in a specific area to tell us what will it cost you to manage it. Um, and, we, and we work out value for money essentially. So the cost of your bid versus the biodiversity value of your site. Uh, and we, we fund to a point where we no longer consider it to be um, value for money. So, I mean, they, that's very variable. It depends on who else is in the tender with you as to what is considered value for money. Um, but it's a really great process to be a part of, I think. And, you know, we've secured some beautiful conservation assets and have some amazing landholders in our network as a result of those programs. Um, and you can see on the bottom there, the cultural biodiversity pilot offer, very similar for fix, uh, to fixed price offer, but targeted at um, Indigenous landowners. So we have closed the AOIs for that now. We are piloting it in this region um, and we'll be starting assessment for that very shortly. So watch this space if you, if you do know some Indigenous land managers that might be interested. Um, yeah, get them to get in touch with us because we're hoping that it will be successful and we'll be able to roll it out across the state. Uh, so very quickly, <laughs> very, very quickly, here's an example of a conservation tender that we ran recently. Uh, we are currently in the process of, we're almost at signing of agreements uh, for this tender now. But we were, it's a trial um, to pilot biodiversity plus carbon partnered with the Clean Energy Regulator as part of their environmental plantings project. So this was a great way for um, us to be able to support really high integrity biodiversity claims in a carbon area. Landholders um, generate the carbon credits and are able to either use them on farm for carbon neutrality or sell them into the carbon market if they so choose. We targeted, um, very targeted at threatened ecological communities in highly fragmented landscapes. So that was from east of Holbrook to about Daniliquin. Um, and we actually had a five hectare minimum on remnants in that area because we were targeting box gum woodlands and inland grey box, which as you know, if you've been for a drive through that area, they're in very small patches um, and don't often meet that 20 hectare minimum that we start with for, for TEC. So what does that actually look like? This is an example of what that might have looked like. So we have the larger conservation area and then the carbon planting sits within that conservation area to expand that area. So the idea here was that we would then, once the carbon uh, permanence period ended at 100 years, the conservation agreement sits over the top of that and it recognises that those carbon plantings actually have quite a lot of biodiversity significance at the 100 year mark. They've been there for 100 years. They've become habitat. Uh, and so that's then offering, whoops, that's offering protection to those areas post um, the carbon pr project ending, I suppose. Uh, and again, that, that includes funded management activities for site establishment and annual management of the remnant area. Um, and also once the carbon reaches that 100 year mark, there's payments to support managing that as a biodiversity area as well. So thank you very much. I'm going to wrap up. <laughs> um, if, you have any further, if you have any questions, please come and chat with Matt and I at the trade stall. Uh, we'd love to chat with you. There are a few landholders in the room too, if you'd like to chat to someone in the network who's had a go at it. Thank you so much, Cassie. Um, so many great examples of how land managers can be involved. Um, as Cassie said, they have a trade store over where you'll have lunch and she'll be here all day to continue these conversations. Cassie will also join us up here on the panel um, uh, in about 20 minutes. So if you have questions, please do say.